he told me that this is as good a system as anything. We have a reveal this week, and the chart is CLOV. That was a recommendation. By the way, you can find all these recommendations at DaveLeonard.com slash archives. So the buy was at three, stop was at two, IPT of four for a risk of one. It was a pullback. It was also a Landry light pullback. Notice that the big blue arrow is pointing higher. By the way, that seems kind of extreme, but that's what this particular stock called for. I forget the HV on it, but I think the 50 day HV was like 80 or so. And we can look at that when we get to the live charts. Anyway, you can see Landry light, which is illustrated below quite a few days of it. We had one little intersection here, but for the most part, you can see it's been in a pretty serious uptrend. And in addition to uptrend in the Landry light, which you have here where the lows are greater than the moving average, notice that this stock began to accelerate higher. So that makes for a really good setup. Nice clean chart for the most part, just goes up for the most part, day after day after day. And mathematically, that's equivalent to linear regression. I just like to draw a line through the bars and see how many I can intersect, but you can see it's very persistent in its, and in its acceleration higher, he tried to say. Anyway, it pulls back to the 30 EMA, and that's illustrated down below. Notice the Landry light count goes from about 15 or so, 15 or 20, back down to zero, and that completes the, the setup. Now, I don't just trade Landry light pullbacks, obviously, and I just had this as a pullback. It's also a trend pivot pullback. You see this little pivot point here where we tried to rally, came right back in. In fact, this almost triggered us in. It missed by one cent, and I thought it might have turned into a wait for an entries example, but it did trigger. And so far, so good. We're not setting a world of fire just yet, but that in the poke in the eye. Entries here, stops down here again, and IPT is up here. So we'll see how it shakes out. Now, percentage-wise, I know that's huge. Again, I know that's what it calls for. All right, uh, no new mission charts this week. I actually don't have any setups going into tomorrow, and that's perfectly normal for the methodology. The database really hasn't been producing anything very exciting tonight i'm kind of curious to see what stock picks you guys might have and i'll be happy to flesh them out for you all right let's do a brief tfm tfm 10 percent update especially with the market making new highs here are some zones and these were inspired by jeff who's here tonight initially i just had a line at 10 percent of the 50-week closing high and then jeff pointed out that he likes to get out when he's about five percent when the market's about five percent away from that 50-week closing high so he likes to get out a little bit on a little bit earlier so I went ahead and created those zones. The top of that 5% zone would be 100%. I was helping a neighbor out. Let me just shut this phone off. I'm uh, my nickname. One of my friends calls me MacGyver. Anybody needs to fix anything, they come see me, which is kind of cool. I like that. Anyway, uh, the sell, just real quick. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about the system since we've covered it so many times. But uh, weekly close, 10% or more away from 50 week closing high and it closed below the 50-week moving average. There's my YouTube information. I have a lot of videos on YouTube. Check, um, especially check the Traders Quick Clips. There's a lot of videos on TFM. Anyway, our last sell signal was here in the queues. It didn't quite trigger a sell signal. We'll get to that in just one second. The buy's a little bit more stringent, bit of a whipsaw filter in there. Two bars of upside Landry light and within 10% of the 50-week closing high. And by the way, this is a weekly chart, and we're buying and selling on a weekly chart on a calendar basis. And, and that's something that I didn't really put a lot of thought into when I first designed the system. But I want to leave the system as it is, as opposed to some people who change their systems to fit the markets. So I want to leave it with the original code or whatever you want to look at it. Anyway, so, so far so good. It's had a pretty good run, as you can see, since that last buy. And the stop would be a close below the 50-week moving average again and 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. Now, based on today's high, you can see this zone jumped up a little bit. This is 100% of the 50-week closing high, which would be today's close. And you can see it jumped. The, the red zone jumped up too. And the moving average is catching up. Now, the moving average could easily get well above this 10% line. If that occurs, close below the moving average would not trigger a sell signal, it has to close below both. Anyway, so your sell is about 50.77 right now. Now, as a composite, for S&Gs, as I've said quite a bit, I thought I would just take 100 shares. And again, the stop would be a close below the 50-week moving average and a close 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high, which would be right here. 
the top of this green zone. So this is minus 5%, this is minus 10%, and this is the 50 week, again, closing moving average, simple moving average for this. I use a simple moving average because this is a longer term trend following system. I wasn't as worried about it catching up the price as fast. In hindsight, the drawdowns are pretty steep. Maybe I, I could have thought about it at EMA, but you can see right here, because we're using a simple, it was able to ride out this correction. Now this is pretty ugly. I'll show you this in just one second. It is something I didn't think about too much, but you can see based on this close here, which is earlier today, so this is not the actual closing price, but close to it. I got in at 319.49, by the way, and in older presentations that showed the actual trade. I only did 100 shares. It was kind of an s g type of trade, but it's actually turned into real money now. And based on this close, the position's worth 16 to $17,000. Now, a little bit about a system. Before you trade anyone's system, and by the way, I'm not a mechanical trader. I just did this uh, trading 100 shares just for fun. Um, I'm discretionary in my trading. I pick stocks. I'm a stock picker and a swing to intermediate term is my time frame. I get in for a swing trade and hopefully hang on via trailing stops for a long, long time. And I'll touch upon that in just one second. But my designer's intent was to avoid the diaper change moments as Ian McActivy calls them, or used to call them, God rest his soul, great guy, by the way to get you out of the way when things go south. Now, technical analysis 101 is if a market's gonna drop 50%, it's gonna drop 10% first, right? Okay, and not that it won't keep dropping after 10%, but 10% is a good round number for the indices, especially the S&P 500, and it works out pretty good in the queues. I did a brief analysis on the queues when uh, that I, I got that buy signal a while back and decided that it might be worth a shot for kind of like S and Gs. One thing I didn't build into the system that I have built into my core methodology, and again, you can go to davelearn.com slash archives. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but you can see all the setups for years and years and years that are recommended, warts and all. And uh, if you're wondering how to pick good stocks, not that I'm a great grand poobah, but if you look at the stocks that I picked, you'll notice that they should have persistency, acceleration, decent volume, but not super thick to where they're too efficient something i'll touch upon in just one second and quite a few other things but as you go through them and each day when i talk about the setup if you can't sleep at night then watch those and you'll see you'll learn a lot about stock picking for free now i did a course on stock picking be happy to sell it to you it's 14 hours of just how to pick stocks but you can get a lot of good information for free by going through those archives Anyway, no money, no money management is built into the actual system. In other words, I'm not taking profits. It's either all in or out. In this case, it's 100 shares. Like, ah, who cares? Well, it's starting to add up, but so I care now. <laughs> so there are some unintended benefits, so to speak. Again, the designer's intent was to build something to get you out of the market when it looks questionable, but it also turned into a decent little trend following system. And I have one client that's that's been around the market's a lot longer than me. He was traded way back in the 70s, and I think he's recently retired, but he told me that this is as good a system as anything, and it's something that he he also follows and he likes. So that that was a big vote of confidence for me that this little simple system can work. And by the way, simpler is always better. That's why I trademarked Trading Simplified. You'll notice that on my website. Now, it does act a lot, act, it does act a lot like a longer term trend following system. By the way, one thing I've noticed over the years is all methodologies that are similar methodologies tend to act in a certain way. So if you've got a longer term trend following system, your drawdown is gonna be abysmal and your accuracy is gonna suck, okay? <laughs> a shorter term system, you're gonna be a lot more accurate, but if you're trading a pure, short-term system, and spoiler alert, I'll get to that in just one second, you're going to occasionally get whacked, and I'm of the strong belief that a pure short-term swing tra trading system, in other words, you're going to get after so many days, does not work. But longer term, you're risking too much, longer term, but that's where the money is, so I take a hybrid approach where I'm taking partial profits along the way. So it does act a lot like a longer term trend following system. It'll catch some fantastic trends, but it does have some pretty serious drawdowns. We'll take a look at that right now. 
So you can see again, I got long way back here. I forget, I've forgotten when it was March of 2023. So I've been long for over a year, almost a year and a half. That's crazy. Anyway, you can see from that peak to trough, that was a $4,482 loss. Now remember, that's only on 100 shares. So that's a pretty substantial loss. And then right here, this was a $3,600 open loss. Now, because we didn't stop out, these are paper losses. But if your stop is hit, if it's a paper loss or not, it doesn't matter. You have to take your loss. And then the biggest one here, which was quite painful, was an $8,000 drawdown. And that one was kind of hard to stomach. Again, it, it started out kind of like an S&G type of trade. Who cares? 100 shares. But then it became real money, as you can see, over time. And what's amazing is this was like a 60% move, at least to the peak, from that entry. And that's in the NASDAQ queues. Now, that, believe it or not, I'm going to sit here in, in, in a few minutes or stand here as I am standing now and talk about how indices such as the queues and the spiders and e-minis are, are wildly efficient, okay? But this market actually made a really nice inefficient move about 60 percent over the last year and a half or so so that's that's kind of cool i know you're gonna part it with me but anyway part of longer term trend following is visible drawdowns that's why we again scale out and then we trail that stop higher over time okay just real quick for the ledger 100 i, I want to do proof of concept and this is something that i talked about a little bit last week in san francisco last week at band camp I spoke at the TSAASF, which is a technical analysis society, and it's a great bunch of people. It's my third time speaking in 15 years. Linda Rasky was there. Uh, her husband, Damon Pavlatis, was there. Bollinger, uh, me, Bob Schott. So it was really a really good, uh, really good seminar. But one of the things I talked about, my topic was Livermore because I did a big series of Livermore a couple of years back on stock charts and then Bruce Frazier called me up asked me to do uh, to present in San Francisco on that and I tied it, the the overall theme of the seminar was old school new school so I talked about a lot of things that Livermore talked about and how even though it's many years ago that he discovered these things they're still relevant relevant today and one of the things was a stock is never too high to buy. Now, again, I don't want to get into the whole seminar, that part of it, but there are some caveats. You don't want to just rush out and buy new highs unless it's something like crypto and the market's blowing and going. And as we'll get to in, in a few minutes, it's very inefficient market. But if you're buying a big basket of stocks, you're much better off buying new highs, of course, and trying to bottom fish. Now, just real brief, to those who weren't familiar with it, a few months back, I think it was the uh, end of May, beginning of June. The oldest one I had in here was May 30th, if I believe that I found so far. And you can see a couple of early June ones in here. The tracking date when they were put in is here, okay? And then this is the move since they've been put in. So this one here, to my surprise, is going 80%. I had one of them that I pulled off the list recently, ASTS, I think, and it was, it, I pulled it off at 180. I think it was closer to, uh, well over 200, closer to 300 before it started drawing down. But anyway, this is the hypothetical. Everything else I'm showing you is live trades, like the Q trade, like the CLOV. I've took 2,000 in my model account. I have other share sizes and other accounts, but I do keep a model account where I actually make the trades. So I can tell you where I got in, where I got out, what discretion I used, and so on and so forth. But anyway, it's pretty amazing that. This was bought on a new closing high. Now notice that it immediately went into a bit of a drawdown and that's why it would be tough to just rush out and buy new closing highs. However, if you were to spread it out over a bunch of stocks, eventually, and, and maybe not that eventually, maybe sooner rather than later, a lot of these will take off and make it all worthwhile. So this one had an 80% run since July 31st when it first was placed in the portfolio and counting. And then if you look at some of these other ones, this one's nearly 60, 50, 40 something, 30 something, 30 something, 30 something, 30 something, all the way down to, these are the first, I think, 
40 stocks in here. And most all the stocks right now are winners in the list, but we had a nice little move after that spill we had in the overall market. So that helps.